In this lesson, we'll take a look at solving three-dimensional problems using trigonometry, which will involve some right angle trigonometry and also the sine and cosine law. And in the first of two examples, we have Evan here who wishes to find the width of a river. So the blue part of the diagram here is the river. This is a cliff that he also wants to find the height of in a grassy area above. Now we have a couple of triangles drawn here. And Evan cannot measure each, either of these distances directly. But he can make some measurements, enough to actually use some trigonometry to find how far it is across the river and how high the cliff is, inaccessible as it may be on the opposite side. So he does have an instrument that he can use to measure the uh, angle of inclination to the top of the river at the opposite side. And that's 28 degrees, so that means that this angle right here in this uh, vertical triangle is 28 degrees. Now he also measures downstream to a point, 50 meters downstream, and he measures these two angles to this point across here, this angle right here and this angle right here, and he measured those two angles to be 85 degrees and 32 degrees. And that is a sufficient amount of information to find the distance across the river and the height of the cliff. So we'll label those two distances. This is the d distance across the river and h will be the height of the cliff. Now, we're going to find the distance across the river first, and in this uh, flat triangle here uh, on the surface of the river, the only angle we do not know is this angle here. We do know the 32 degree and the 85 degree angle, and so we can use the fact that in any plane triangle, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees to find that angle. So if we take 180 degrees and subtract 32 and 85, we'll get that value to be 63. So labeling that in the triangle, that's 63 degrees. And now we can use the sine law to find the river distance because for the river distance, we do know the opposite angle, the 32, and we know the 63 degree angle and the length of its opposite side. And that's a sufficient amount of information to use the sine law to find the length r. So the sine of 32 over its opposite side r will equal the sine of 63 over the side length 50, because 50 is opposite the 63 degree angle. So cross multiplying, r will equal the product of 50 and sine 32 divided by the sine of 63 degrees, which works out to be approximately 29.7 meters. So it's almost 30 meters across the river. Now, in this vertical triangle, it's not labeled in the uh, diagram here, but this is a right angle here. And so we can actually use right angle trigonometry to find the height of the cliff. The height is opposite the 28 degree angle. And we do know this R value, this is 29.7 meters. That's the adjacent side in that triangle for the 28 degree angle. So opposite and adjacent is tan, the trig ratio we would use. So we would write tan of 28 equals the uh, opposite h side over the adjacent 29.7 side. And so h will equal the product of 29.7 and a tan of 28 degrees. And so calculating that, we get the height of the cliff to be 15.8 meters. It's almost 16 meters high. And so answering the question, the river is 29.7 meters wide and the cliff is 15.8 meters high. Flipping over to the second example, on page two here, an MNR conservation officer, Ministry of Natural Resources conservation officer, is flying in a helicopter 40 meters above the ground. And he sees a hunter and a deer, and he wants to know the distance between them. He does make some calculations, but again, because he's off the ground, uh, it's difficult to measure directly the distance from the hunter to the deer. So he's 40 meters off the ground, so this distance would be 40. He does determine the angle of depression to the hunter and the deer is 8 degrees and 13 degrees. So these gray lines represent uh, lines parallel to the ground. So the angle that that and his line of sight to the hunter would be 8 degrees. And the same over here, this is parallel to the ground. So the angle of uh, depression to the deer is 13 degrees. And he can measure the angle on the ground is 117. Now, because of the fact that this line is parallel to the ground, this would also be 8 degrees. And this line is parallel to the ground, so this is angle of uh, depression is 
13 degrees. The angle of inclination from the deer up to helicopter is also 13. Now we'll label a couple of things on the, on the diagram. I'll call H the distance from directly below the helicopter to the hunter and D the distance from directly below the helicopter to the deer. And ultimately we want to find this ground distance between the hunter and the deer. Now in this triangle on the ground, once we find H and D, uh, we'll know two sides in that triangle and the angle between them, so then we could use the cosine law to find side G. In order to find H and D, they're actually the adjacent sides in these two vertical triangles, uh, adjacent for the 8 degree angle, of course. And so in this triangle over here, the H is the adjacent side, the 40 is opposite the 8 degree angle, and so opposite and adjacent are two sides in a triangle that involve the tan ratio. And so that's why I would use the tan of 8 degrees is the opposite 40 over the H adjacent side. That's the 100 distance. And so solving for H, H would equal 40 divided by the tan of 8 degrees. If you're wondering why it's 40 divided by the tan of 8 degrees, the tan of 8 degrees really has the denominator of 1. And so when we cross multiply h will equal the product of 1 and 40, which is the 40, divided by the third part in that, which is the tan of 8 degrees. So h is 40 divided by the tan of 8, which approxim is approximately 285 meters. So we'll label that in the diagram. That's this side. Same thing over here, but of course the angle is 13 degrees, not 8. So the tan of 13 degrees will equal the opposite 40 side over the D distance to the deer side. That's the uh, adjacent side. And so D, the same as over here, D will equal the quotient of 40 and tan 13. 40 divided by tan 13 is approximately 173 meters. So we'll m write that in the diagram. So now we have these two sides, and we can use the cosine law to find side G. So the cosine law would look like this. g squared would equal h squared plus d squared minus 2hd, the product of these two sides, cosine of angle g, which is the 117. And so filling in all the values, g squared equal, equal 285 squared plus 173 squared minus 2 times 285 times 173 times the cos of 117. Now remember your order of operations. This whole part here must be calculated before you subtract it from the sum of these two squares. So make sure you do that in your calculator before you in order to get the correct g squared value. So g squared works out to approximately 155,922. Now g squared equals that, so we take the square root of that large number to find g, and g works out to approximately 395 meters. So answering the question, the distance between the hunter and the deer is 395 meters, and that's the end of the lesson.